microbiome in autoimmune diseases is a rapidly evolving field with lots of new findings over the last few years. Um, there has been a long association between infectious agents and autoimmune reactions, um, but more recently we also learned more about um, chronic colonization with commensals that contribute to autoimmune diseases. Um, much of the focus is of course in the gut microbiome, but also the skin and oral microbiome can contribute to these diseases. Um, among several emerging paradigms, one interesting one is the so-called leaky gut. Leaky gut means that your gut lining is not as tight as it should be and may leak through molecules. Uh, this has long been known, for instance, in HIV disease, where um, molecules such as lipopolysaccharide, a very immunostimulatory molecule for many bacteria, uh, can uh, contribute to uh, exhaustion of the T cells in HIV. And it turns out that not just molecules, but also live bacteria can cross the barrier under certain circumstances. It was found, for instance, by our group that a certain enterococcus bacterium can cross the barrier and reach internal tissues such as the lymph nodes, spleen, or liver um, in an animal model. But we also obtained this bacterium by DNA uh, techniques in the livers of patients with autoimmune diseases such as lupus uh, or autoimmune hepatitis. Now lupus uh, is a systemic autoimmune disease that targets many different organs, but rarely the gut. And interestingly, this Enterococcus species, Enterococcus gallinarum, that we found uh, crossing the barrier in an animal model of lupus, it drives many phenotypes of this disease. It activates the immune cells, particularly the T cells, but also the B cells to produce autoantibodies, and it stimulates innate inflammation. And all of this culminates in, in autoimmunity, as we've seen in, in the models. Um, interestingly, this bacterium together with two other bacteria was also recently implicated in an autoimmune liver disease called primary sclerosing cholangitis, which fits to our findings of not just lupus but also autoimmune hepatitis. So there are already two different autoimmune liver diseases where this bacterium and together with others most likely uh, play a, a crucial role. Now, um, other examples include that similarities between structures of the microbes and self-antigens could trigger autoimmunity. This is called cross-reactivity, and we found, for instance, a certain skin bacterium in skin lesions of patients with skin lupus that may um, be implicated in triggering a specific response to one particular autoantigen called Rho60. Other work um, uh, also implicates the microbiome in various autoimmune diseases such as multiple sclerosis or type 1 diabetes and of course lots of research activities in the, in the gut and by, uh, in, in inflammatory bowel disease. But just to stick to those diseases outside the gut, since leaky gut or an impaired gut barrier is really uh, a dominant theme, um, one can think of different ways how eventually down the line this could uh, develop into new therapies. One idea would be to simply strengthen the barrier so that less molecules and bacteria could get through. Uh, one company, for instance, is trying to develop a molecule that strengthens this barrier. Another idea would be to develop targeted therapies against these bacteria that cross the barrier. Uh, we in the academic setting have developed at Yale, for instance, a vaccine that when given in the muscle can deplete or prevent uh, this bad bacterium I mentioned earlier, Enterococcus gallinarum, from crossing the barrier and stimulating autoimmunity. And besides vaccination, of course, uh, novel antibiotics that are more specific than the current ones would be ideas to develop uh, therapies, as well as uh, a few companies are developing phage therapies, which are very interesting, but highly specific. So if you have a specific strain, as in the case I just explained, it may be worthwhile also to develop certain phages that then just target and deplete these bacteria. So overall, I think there's still a lot to be done, but we learned a lot over the last few decades from basic mechanisms in animal models to finding bacteria, not just in the gut, but also in different tissues. And eventually there uh, is a lot of activity as, as elucidated in this conference here on, on new therapies to target uh, the gut bacteria and other microbiome components in autoimmune diseases.